Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to Intuition. Today's video, we're going to be going over some pharmacology questions to develop our understanding of drug binding and drug antagonism. So we're going to be answering three questions to develop our understanding of drug binding and its impact on clinical outcomes. All right, let's dive into it. Question number one. Question number one says, an inhibitory medication suppresses the catalytic performance of its target enzyme without eradicating the enzyme's ability to catalyze reactions. How would you classify the antagonistic effect of such a medication? So this question says that we have a certain medication that antagonizes the effect of a certain enzyme, which means that it causes this enzyme to not perform up to its capability. The medication doesn't completely deactivates the enzyme, but it suppresses the activity enough that the enzyme is not able to catalyze reactions as quickly and as forcefully as it would had the medication not been there to antagonize it. When it comes to this type of antagonism, what is it called? Well, let's go through the answer choices. Answer choice A says competitive antagonist. A competitive antagonist is an antagonist that competes with the substrate for the binding site of the enzyme. In this question, we're not being told anything about the medication competing with an agonist. We're simply being told that this medication is able to suppress the activity of the enzyme by itself. It doesn't sound like this is going to be competitive binding. So I would say no to answer choice A. Answer choice B says non-competitive antagonist. This is the right answer. A non-competitive antagonist is simply able to bind to the enzyme and get the enzyme to, in a sense, weaken and not operate to its full potential. That is what a non-competitive antagonist does. And that is why answer choice C is not the right answer because answer choice C says uncompetitive antagonist. An uncompetitive antagonist completely suppresses the activity of the enzyme. And it's able to do this when the enzyme is bound to its substrate and a non-competitive antagonist simply suppresses the activity of the enzyme it doesn't completely deactivate the activity of the enzyme and of course answer choice d is incorrect because it says partial antagonist which is not really a term there is a term for partial agonist and a partial agonist is a drug that is able to stimulate the activity of an enzyme but not to its full potential so that's incorrect and the correct answer is b non-competitive antagonist. All right, let's go on to question number two. Question number two says, the anti-epileptic drug Ficampa, also known as Parampinil, is a specific example of a non-competitive antagonist. It suppresses the activity of ample receptors by binding to a site other than the glutamate recognition site. Such an alternative binding site is known as which of the following? Once again, we're dealing with a non-competitive antagonist. In this case, we're given the specific example of Ficampa, and it binds to AMPA receptors at a site other than the active site. And the answer is definitely going to be an allosteric site, right? When a ligand binds to a site other than the active site, that site is known as an allosteric site, which is basically another name for alternative site. So the correct answer will be answer choice A, allosteric binding site. So that should be an easy one. Now let's go on to question number three. Question number three says, in contrast to a non-competitive antagonist, an uncompetitive antagonist does which of the following? Select all that apply. Okay, so we talked about this in the first question. We talked about the difference between a competitive antagonist and an uncompetitive antagonist. Uncompetitive antagonist binds and deactivates the enzyme when the enzyme is bound to its substrate or its agonist. And we can say that an uncompetitive antagonist completely deactivates the activity of enzymes, whereas a non-competitive antagonist suppresses the activity of an enzyme. It lowers the activity, whereas uncompetitive destroys the activity. So let's go through the answer choices to see which ones are correct and which ones are incorrect. Answer choice A says, an uncompetitive antagonist completely deactivates enzyme substrate complex. Yes, an uncompetitive antagonist binds to the enzyme when the enzyme is bound to a substrate and completely deactivates that complex. So that would be a correct answer. Answer choice B says, an uncompetitive antagonist lowers the maximum signal transduction output of the enzymatic system. I would say yes to that answer choice because they completely deactivate enzyme substrate complexes, which means that when you're looking at an enzymatic system, some of those enzymes will not be able to catalyze reactions because the uncompetitive antagonist has completely deactivated their activity, which means that only a few leftover enzymes will be available to catalyze reactions which means that the total output that you can get from that enzymatic system is going to be lowered. So this answer choice would be correct. And answer choice C says, 
an uncompetitive antagonist, competes with the substrate for binding to enzyme active site. That would be a competitive antagonist, not an uncompetitive antagonist. So that would be an incorrect answer. And answer choice D says, an uncompetitive antagonist increases the substrate concentration needed to generate an enzymatic response that is 50% of maximum response. Is that true? That is not going to be true. Why? Because remember, uncompetitive antagonist basically destroys a portion of the enzyme within the enzymatic system, which means that the total enzymes left over that's available to generate an output is going to be low. Now that you have lower enzymes to generate an output, it's going to take less substrate to generate 50% of the maximum output because the maximum output that the system is able to generate has been lowered because a good portion of the enzymatic system has been deactivated. So it's going to take less substrate to generate 50% of the maximum output, not more. So this would also be incorrect. And the correct answers are A and B. So there you have it. Let me know if you guys learned anything from this video. Let me know if you understood the concept that we went over today. If you did, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. Or if you have any questions about what we covered today, leave it in the comment section as well. And if you have any video requests, any questions or topics that you would like us to cover on this channel, also leave that in the comment section. And remember to give the video a like and share the video with someone who you think would benefit from the content that we create on this channel. And as always, I would like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.